Obviously, we had some big games within the conference here this past weekend. Most notably, as you see behind me, someone subbing to me in the middle of recording an episode. That's cool. All right. <laughs> that caught me off guard there. I'm going to leave that in the video. What is up, guys? It's DDP back with another quick Big 12 football roundup for you here. The West Virginia Mountaineers go to Austin and stun the Texas Longhorns on a two-point conversion with less than 20 seconds to play. Now, I'm going to lead off with this one. This was a major back-and-forth game. You had number 13 West Virginia going to number 17 Texas. Texas fresh off the stumble last week in Stillwater. Texas has some issues, there's no doubt. They've now lost three games, and we're barely into November. They they are completely out of the Big 12 title running at this point. Uh, their highlights are getting, at least in name value, TCU, Oklahoma. Oklahoma's a good team. And uh, TCU, USC, and Oklahoma. Getting those three in order was impressive for them. But after surviving uh, a little bit of an early scare against Baylor, they then lost to Oklahoma State last week, and now here they are losing to West Virginia at home. Adam Proctor, I know uh, I know you're a loyal follower of this college football roundup here, a huge West Virginia fan. I was thinking of you when I saw that score, buddy. But yes, so here you go. In the opening quarter, Texas races out to a little bit. They got a 14-10 edge after one quarter, and second quarter was more of the same. West Virginia now outscoring Texas, 17-14. Third quarter was nothing. It was three points for Texas, nothing for West Virginia. Then fourth quarter kind of went back to the previous method where West Virginia gets 15 points to win. That I love this move from West Virginia, the ballsy move to go for it, because it's like you have a chance to steal a win that you shouldn't even be in at this point. It's a huge season-defining win for West Virginia. I know they had a disappointing loss a couple weeks ago, but this is the kind of thing that can absolutely help turn the season around for them because they are still very much in the thick of the Big 12 title race. Oklahoma and West Virginia are the leaders in the Big 12 right now. And let's see here. Let me run through the stat sheet. Will Greer, 28 of 42 for 346, three touchdowns, no picks. By the way, he also is who ran in the score on the two-point conversion to win the game effectively. On Texas's side, Sam Ellinger goes 25 of 36 for 354, so near identical numbers. Three touchdowns, no picks. Uh, for West Virginia, got the running game going again. Petaway, nine carries for 121 yards and two touchdowns. That is stellar production. McCoy also goes 17 for 94, so very solid numbers for him, even though he doesn't get a touchdown in that. For Texas, you got 14 for 80 out of Watson. Ellinger gives you another 11 for 52 in a score, so four touchdowns total for Ellinger. Solid performance. I am finally starting to buy into the idea that he could be a very good quarterback. Last year, I didn't see it. Even when they beat OU a couple weeks or a few weeks ago now, I still didn't really buy into him so much as I bought into, wow, OU is a wretched defense. And we'll, we'll get to that here shortly, but... All in all, great performance uh, for Ellinger personally. Texas had a chance, just couldn't quite close the deal. Receiving West Virginia Sills gives you nine, excuse me, six catches for 97 yards, two touchdowns. McCoy, another three for 55 cent. I mean, just balanced attack beyond that. Three catches, five catches, two catches, four catches, three catches. Like, balanced, balanced passing attack. That's one thing that makes West Virginia so good. For Texas, you got your main two receivers showing out. Humphrey gives you nine for 143 and a touchdown. And looks like in this case, instead of Johnson, it was Duvernay giving you six for 100 and a touchdown as well. So Texas came out and played. And, you know, just ask Oklahoma. If, if you are able to put up more than 40 points in a game, especially at home, you should not be losing that game. So Texas has some answers it's going to have to look for within for. West Virginia, however, gets this huge win. And now West Virginia's biggest threat for the remainder of the season. And no matter what, well, I don't want to say no matter what, in all likelihood, 
The final week of the regular season for the Big 12 before their title game will be Oklahoma at West Virginia, so at Morgantown for a night game. That'll be stellar, and more than likely those teams will then meet again the following week for the Big 12 title game. I'm assuming neither of them are going to trip up again before then, but I'm actually looking forward to that. That's really interesting, the dynamic of having to face each other back-to-back -back weeks. I'm curious to see what that brings to the games. Elsewhere in the Big 12, you have Baylor beating Oklahoma State. So Oklahoma State kind of fell down off of that high horse they were on. I'm not going to run you through too much of the stat sheet. Let me see if I can pull up something here real quick for you. But Baylor wins this game 35-31. Oklahoma State, a letdown game, moves to 5-4 and four now on the season. And I think it kind of goes a step further to show you Oklahoma State, even though they got Texas, or excuse me, Texas, even though they beat Oklahoma, they have some issues. And I think West Virginia just continued to build upon what Oklahoma State kind of exposed in Texas the previous week. If you're a Longhorn fan, I feel for you in that regard, but you got a, you got a bright future. I did, I have seen enough from Texas to tell me that they are absolutely moving in the right direction. Next year, I actually thought for a while they were going to make a run at this year, winning the Big 12 and doing a little something something. But we'll see where that takes them. Uh, so the stat sheet thing I'm trying to pull up here is not loading for some reason on this particular game. Odd. So we'll bypass that one for the stats, but yes, Baylor 35-31 at home against Oklahoma State. Elsewhere, Iowa State puts a shellacking on Kansas in a still relative low scoring game, 27-3. I feel like Iowa State's really the only school in the Big 12 who really wants to play defense. Texas has shown it can at times. Uh, OU flirted with the idea once for a minute. But it's really Iowa State is the one defensive stalwart. TCU has the ability. And I guess TCU, if you're looking at the overall picture, you would say TS, uh, TCU has that claim, not Iowa State. But all the same, 27-3 for Iowa State. They've now moved to 5-3. and three. They had a game canceled, I think, at the start of the year that they never got to play. So they're in kind of a weird bind. Obviously, with three losses like Texas, they're not going to be in the running for any kind of Big 12 title game, but they can still be a nuisance. In fact, I don't think they've played Texas yet. So that will be interesting there. Longhorn's still got a real challenge ahead of them. TCU beats Kansas State. So the six-game, excuse me, five-game slide. Five-game slide for TCU, I believe, is over now. Yes, four and five is their record. Uh, they win 14-13 at home against Kansas State. So the problems are still very real. This is a Kansas State team that Oklahoma murdered, and that was after they murdered TCU. So there are some serious, serious problems still for TCU, but at least they got back into the win column. Man, in a 14-13 game, there's so little to talk about that I'm just going to move on to the next one. Uh, sorry if you're a TCU or K-State fan. Uh, I'm just going to bypass that one because I don't feel like there's as much to talk about. So we're going to jump instead now into the final game for the Big 12 this past Saturday, which was Oklahoma at Texas Tech. Night games in Lubbock can be really weird. It can be really, really weird. And I feel like that's what we saw, but it kind of cut both ways. So Kyler Murray, who's number two in the Heisman race right now behind uh, Tua from Alabama, opens the game about as wretchedly as you can start. I think of his first four passes, two of them were intercepted and returned inside the Oklahoma 20. One of them, I just don't even know what he was looking at. The other, it looked like the pass just kind of sailed on him, or maybe there was a miscommunication with the receiver as far as the depth of the route. Regardless, Tech gets 14 easy points right off the bat, and it became an uphill climb for Oklahoma for a little bit. Tech outscores Oklahoma 14-7 in the first. Oklahoma rallies back in the second with 21 points, outscoring Tech by four. Third quarter, Oklahoma pitched a shutout 7-0. And then in the fourth, Oklahoma gets the edge now here's the crazy thing tech was still very much in this game at one point looking to tie it at 42 so they got oklahoma's up 42 uh so at this point it'd be 42 36 tech gets a touchdown to move to 40 and instead of going for one they want to tie the game they go for two and they do a reverse pass which they had done earlier successfully in the game and the guy who threw the pass was a quarterback in high school I think it was, it wasn't Duffy, I think it was Collins, maybe? 
I, I forget exactly who it was that threw the pass, but he throws an ill-advised pass. Oklahoma intercepts it in the middle of the end zone and returns it 100 yards for the two-point score. That's a lot of work for just two points, but it was monstrous in this game because instead of being tied at 42, now it's 44-40 Oklahoma, and all the momentum swings back to Oklahoma. You know, Oklahoma had finally captured the lead, and then Tech looked like they were about to tie it back up, and it still kind of felt like if you're OU, like, ooh, this is really, like, breathing down my neck. But because they were able to get that score for Oklahoma, it just changed the dynamic, I felt, of the game at that point. And then there there you go. Texas, or sorry, Oklahoma gets another touchdown to go to 51-40. Tech gets a touchdown. Looks like they go for two again. Yeah, they have to if it's 46. So uh, go for two again. I don't remember what the play was in that particular case. Don't get it. Kick the onside. Don't recover it. Oklahoma hangs on 51-46. So, quick run through of the stat sheet here. Kyler Murray, yes, he had the two hideous picks to start the game. Still goes 360 yards, three TDs on 20 of 35 passing. He also ran 11 times for 100 yards with another touchdown. So, another strong performance for him. Again, minus those two passes. That'll hurt him, I guess, on the Heisman race. But I don't think anyone's catching Tua at this point anyway. So, good showing from him. For Tech, Bowman had a rough go. He had a collapsed lung earlier in the season, and it looks like maybe that happened again to him against OU. He could not come out after the half, tried to throw some passes, and like literally collapsed to all fours. Like It was kind of a scary thing when they showed the video. But Bowman, before he left the game, was 21 of 26 for 227 and two TDs. He was feasting on this OU defense. And again, it helped that his first two drives, he had incredibly short fields to deal with. But Oklahoma, they might be a little better defensively without Mike Stoops, but they're still a mess, and that's ultimately what's going to hold them back, I think. So I don't think the Big 12, OU has a chance at the playoffs still, but I think Michigan's going to be a nuisance for them trying to leapfrog them. They need Michigan to trip up because I think the reputation of the Big 12 is just too too badly battered at this point to survive uh, if OU has to win games 51-46 in what's perceived as a weak conference. Uh, Duffy in relief comes in 9 of 17 for 139 yards, two touchdowns as well. Collins, the guy I think that's who threw the pass earlier. Uh, yeah, negative two yards. It shows negative one completion on one attempt. I guess that's because it's the two-point conversion. I don't know how the math works in those scenarios. But on the ground, Trey Sermon, big man of the day for Oklahoma. 26 carries for 206 yards, three touchdowns. He is why Oklahoma won. Tech didn't have anyone that could really answer that on their side. I mentioned Murray, 11 for 100 as well with a touchdown. Kennedy Brooks, his quietest day of the year, 4 for 21. Uh, Ward for Tech had 8 carries for 53 yards and a touchdown with a long of 32. Duffy, the backup quarterback, went 13 for 47 with a touchdown. And that was, that was really it. It was the running game that set OU apart from Tech in this game. And there have been times this year Tech could run the ball, but it did not really happen Saturday. So I guess OU's run defense maybe is the one part that's decent. I don't know. Receiving, Lee Morris, uh, Kyler Murray's high school teammate, walked on at OU. He had four catches for 101 yards, two touchdowns. That dude stays getting touchdowns. Literally like 60% of his catches this year have gone for touchdowns, mostly because he's a red zone target, but he even had a 46-yard touchdown catch here. So, you know, make of that what you will. Hollywood Brown dealing with the hamstring issue still, 5 for 76. He did come up a little lame towards the end of the game, so I'm a little concerned for him. Uh, C.D. Lamb, 4 for 51. I thought this was a bad game for Lamb. Lamb got two uh, unsportsmanlike conducts on the same play for getting in the face and shoving uh, a tech defender, John, and... That killed the drive because OU got down to like the 20 on his catch and then the two penalties backed him up 30 yards and they ended up having to punt. Like, great job. Good job, dude. <laughs> I don't know what that's about, but you, you got to talk to him, make sure that doesn't happen again. Uh, nothing else really notable receiving-wise for OU. They got the fullback to get him another touchdown as well. For Tech, Wesley goes 12 for 199. He had like 116 yards in one quarter at one point. And no touchdowns, but he ate them alive. And we've seen that talented big receivers can do that to OU, especially this defense. Even though OU was out without Bookie Radley, uh, 
not a guy that's going to be able to shut that down. He's a smaller uh, defensive back as well. Ward goes 5 for 74 in a touchdown, and Vasher 6 for 42 in a touchdown. So Oklahoma survives. We know OU versus Tech is known to be shootouts in recent years. But, I mean, last year wasn't so much. But we know generally that's how it works. And, man, this was a frustrating game for OU. But they escaped. They did what they had to. Kudos to them, I guess. I'm just looking forward to Oklahoma versus West Virginia. Uh, my favorite in the Big 12 versus my dark horse in the Big 12. But that's all the time I'm going to have for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching, if you're watching. This is going to be pre-recorded, not live. So... If you enjoyed it, let me know. If you want to see more Big 12 football content, let me know. Uh, I will do what I can, but my, my time is stretched thin between Cowboys, Mavericks, and now Big 12. So hang tight. We got more great content coming. But above all, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.